All right, guys, Miles from Miles Fit. Today I'm here with Dan Laxer, and we're gonna be going through a couple workout circuits and an evaluation, which is what we're gonna start with. So I'm gonna do a quick breakdown of Dan's posture mm -hmm. and how he's lining up. We'll see how he stacks up, and we'll look for any discrepancies or abnormalities or anything that could negatively impact his workout that he probably is not aware of yet. Okay, so we're gonna take a look first at his posture from the side. So what I'd have you do, Dan, is yep. just step forward a little bit and just let your arms go down naturally and you're just gonna look straight ahead. I'm gonna come here and take a look at things. So I have here a dowel rod that I'm gonna hold up and I'm gonna to move towards Dan's back. And what I see here is Dan has what's called a sway back posture. A sway back posture is where the thoracic scapula is behind the glutes, okay? So the hips are a little bit forward. This is usually what you'll see with somebody whose feet arches start to collapse a little bit. Now, Dan, do you know if you have um, arches of your feet that have uh, collapsed a little bit, to Not your definitely. knowledge? Definitely. To your knowledge? No, okay, so we'll, we'll check out and see what's going on, okay? So right away we see here, there are some things with this posture that we have to be aware of. Okay, there's some pelvic instability. Okay, so that's one part of the evaluation. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now what we'll do is you'll turn and face this way a little bit, so turn a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna evaluate his hips to see if there's any lateral uh, deviation. My hips don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Shakira said. So I'm gonna put my hands on top of his hips and what I notice is that Dan's hips, unfortunately, are not fully aligned. So right now what we're seeing here is that his left hip is a little bit lower than his right hip. And by the way, this is normal. Nobody has a perfectly aligned uh, hip complex. But you said unfortunately. Yes, I did say unfortunately. <laughs> it's normal, but we can always have room for improvement. So right now what we're seeing, you do have more pressure on the left side. So when deadlifting and squatting or doing any type of uh, movements like complex movements under heavy loads, we're probably gonna find that your hips might deviate a little bit. I don't know if when you squat, you feel like you go to one side or another. Do you notice that? Not when I squat so much, but uh, now I'm gonna be more conscious of it. I mean, I know when I row, I don't know if it's the same thing, okay. but I do feel that I'm pulling more on one side than the other. Do you know which side? I Probably my right. Are you right-handed? Yeah. You're right-handed? Yeah. Okay. Well, check something with your shoulder height. Lift your arms up, drop your arms down completely, and just relax. We'll take a look here. And we'll see what's going on. Yeah, so what we, what we see here is that your right arm is lower so you are more this way. So this hip is lower, this hip is higher, and we have compression kind of on this right side. Have you ever noticed that you've had anything with your right lower back or right side over the years? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I had, um, I had had a problem with my back uh, once in the gym. I, heard, and I, I don't know whether I had hurt my back and affected my, sh my shoulder and, or vice versa, but I had impinged a nerve and it hasn't 100% recovered. On the right side. Yeah, like if I hold my hands up and do this, you'll notice that my, my right hand won't go as upright as my left hand. Mm -hmm. So actually there's a test in posturology for seeing the neurological strength. We'll do yeah. that right now. So actually what you'll do is you'll lock your arms, fingers straight, turn, wrist back, lift your arms straight up, okay? That position you were just in. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply pressure to your hand. Yeah to bring your hand down, you're gonna resist me, not from your trap, not from your shoulder, just from here, okay. keep your arm locked. So resist me, I'm gonna push. Okay, so we see you have good strength on this side, keep this arm up, yeah. and we'll see if on this side, I'm just curious how your strength is, might be okay, but to be determined. So, yeah. Right, so what this tells me right away, relax your arms, this shoulder's lower, okay, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna exaggerate now. This hip is higher, lift your hip higher, just to exaggerate you have compression on this entire side. Yeah. So what's happening is you have a bunch of nerves here called the brachial plexus. So imagine that's kind of the communication highway neurologically for what's going on there. But imagine you're gardening, you have a hose, you're you know, spraying the, uh, the flowers, and someone's stepping on the hose. 
there's not going to be as much water flowing through the hose. So you have a bit of what's called a neural inhibition. Okay. So neurologically, you're not getting maximal stimulation to those muscles. So this is very common, but nobody will know this unless they're tested for it in this kind of evaluation. Yeah. But now that we've identified that, what we know is opening, for example, your serratus anterior muscles and stretching all that out and even stretching your trap and your neck on this side can help uh, release some of that tension and actually help your right side work a little bit better. Now, I know you said you might be stronger on that side, but you might have the illusion of being stronger because you're pulling more yeah. because you have to work harder on that side because actually, interestingly enough, neurologically, you're not as strong on that yeah, side absolutely. as your left side. Yeah. yeah, there was, you notice a huge difference, right? Yeah. It was like night and day. That's so that's also knowing that is going to change the way I drive because I drive standard. Okay. And when I leaning, sit, instead of being at the 10 o'clock point, it's up on top and I'm leaning. So I'm not straight at all. Yeah. So we see that right away. There's an issue. Now I want to do another test. Mm -hmm. Put your hands in front of your legs. Uh, thumbs behind your hands and just lift your arms straight up like this. And I'm going to move your hands together. Yeah, we see on your left side and relax that you're a bit forward. So what this means, relax your arms, you're rotated a bit this way. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we see these are all the things you find in an evaluation that you wouldn't otherwise know. You wouldn't look in the mirror and see this. As a matter of fact, when you look in a mirror, unconsciously we actually straighten ourselves out yeah which is a good thing but when we're walking around our true posture is revealed and you'll see some people they have really exaggerated posture really forward head posture thoracic kyphosis but being aware of these things is huge because if you can fix all these little weaknesses so to speak mm -hmm. the whole system becomes stronger you'll bench press more you'll deadlift more and not only will you be stronger but you'll reduce the likelihood of injury if you probably stood right now on two scales, mm -hmm. we'd probably see that you're applying more weight on one side, probably where your hip is lower than the other side. So when you're squatting, maybe you have 5% more weight on one leg and 5% less weight on the other leg. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.